You weren't kidding. That music was loud. <coughs> Alrighty. Let's hit the record button and see what happens. Alright. I had a bunch of people pop in and pop right back out, and it's their loss. Screw them. Reminds me of weird science. Yeah, the whole fresh music library was a was a uh, it was a music library um, that a lot of people used in the '90s and early 2000s. I hate to do this. Give me just a sec. Okay, that's better. Can everyone hear me? I'm going to assume the answer is yes. <clears throat> All right. I hear crunchies again. Every laptop seems to have crunchy things. Okay. Let's uh let's tear into this stupid thing. So this computer is a little different. No, oh, that's not coming out. Magnetizing time. I just pulled this out of a Seagate yesterday. I can also see that it will get too dark, so let's, uh, let's get a little gain in here. Unfortunately, the uh, light up there, the angle makes it so that it glares pretty bad when I do the camera here, but at least one or two of you, when I asked, indicated you prefer this angle over the, uh, you know, top-down angle. So... I am doing it this way, but I think I could probably do it better the other way. And I would love to hear your thoughts in the live chat on this whole camera angle question. Uh, one of the things that I'm planning on doing is I have an excess of Ryzen systems available to me now. I actually have somehow ended up with five Ryzen computers <laughs> Five Ryzen desktops, and uh, I, I don't know entirely how. <clears throat> but that's about three too many. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my capture card out of the uh, of the big desktop that, frankly, it probably shouldn't even be in. I need Torxes here. And uh, I'm going to set up another desktop to do video capture stuff. And we'll have it over here just for these live streams to replace this touchscreen laptop you can't actually see right now. So, yeah. Yeah, and when I get that set up, um, I have the Elgato PCI Express card and this USB one on this other computer. So, I do have two HDMI capture cards available to me, which means, yes, I can actually set up multiple camera angles in the future. In the near future. That future is not today. Wait. Wait. What? Uh, there's no hard drive. <coughs> I didn't really notice that. Um, there's no hard drive. Uh-oh. So the question is, did I take it out? At, because I've already been in this and cleaned up a bunch of corrosion from liquid damage. But I don't remember taking out a hard drive. So this is a little bit of a problem. Oh my god. I don't know what's going on. But let's take this shield off. See if it's got a... Yep, that's why. That's why I don't remember taking out a hard drive. Because it has an NVMe solid state drive. So at least this computer has uh, upgrading. Does upgrading RAM make much difference? Well, it depends on what you're doing. If you are running one web browser on your computer and not really doing much of anything else, 4 gigs of RAM is probably enough. If you put 8 gigs of RAM in your computer, you can do a lot of things. God, I hate these stupid clips. Why do they do this? Um, you can run a lot more things at once. You know, you can run several Office applications, multiple browsers if that's what you need, lots and lots of browser tabs if that's what you need. Um, so having more RAM will give you more options, yes. 
but uh you know it just depends on what you're doing like I had 16 gigs of RAM in my video editing machines and Premiere is a greedy piece of shit <clears throat> so I ended up when I built this new machine I shoved 64 gigs into it which cost me a pretty penny and I'm not very happy about but um, I can do anything in Premiere and never run out of RAM while using it but it really shouldn't take that much RAM it, it has these spikes that don't make any sense like even if I do math in my head regarding how much video data is being processed by Premiere the numbers just don't add up so I think Adobe's Premiere Pro is a inefficient memory hog POS like even if I think about the size of a frame at 32 bits per channel depth processing and all that kind of crap the numbers don't add up they don't make sense so um, I didn't see any damage under there but what we need to do here let's see let's get this out of the way those are out of the way Yeah, Premiere takes more RAM than it should. <clears throat> and I really should make a video about why. Um, a lot of video editors have become very, very slow over the past decade. Premiere Pro used to run perfectly fine, like in the old CS series. Used to run perfectly fine on Core 2 Duos. Part of the problem with newer stuff is higher resolutions like 4k <coughs> you have to mm, I'm sorry I'm having a I need some coffee clearly my throat is dry um, higher resolutions like 4k 4k is four times the data of 1080p because you have to double the the um, size of the data in two dimensions so it's a four times instead of a two times so 4k is four times bigger than 1080p <clears throat> and 1080p is five ninths larger than 720p so yeah So we're gonna we're gonna get this motherboard out of here, and uh, I really don't want to do this because these things have all these little wires that wrap around the board, and I hate that. I cannot stand it, the way that they design this garbage. But you know, whatever. I don't build the hardware; I just tear it apart. I don't really get much of a say. Obviously, CPU fan got to come out. You want more light? It really looks like you need more light. All the shiny areas are way too bright, but all the all the not shiny areas get dark real fast. You know what? Let me think about this. Hmm. Nah, I'll just leave it alone for now. Yeah, but maybe in the future I will put more lights up. Make this whole situation a little brighter. So let's take some screws out. God almighty, there's so many of these stupid things. Anyway, what I was saying... Oh, HD video is 720p. Full HD video is 1080p. UHD is 2160p or 4K. And there's also what they call DCI or Digital Cinema something. Um, 4K, which is 2160p. But instead of being 3840 dots across, it's 4096. Seems completely pointless to me, but whatever. What do I know? I don't make movies for major theaters. I, I really just personally do not see why 4096 by 2160 is a thing. It doesn't make any sense to me. It seems to me 3840 by 2160 is fine, all by itself. And they really didn't... Uh, what, what good are the extra dots? How many extra dots are there? I'm doing a little math in my head, it's like 200 extra dots horizontally out of, what, 
almost 4,000. I am uh, saving the stream from the suffering that comes with listening to me blow my nose. I hope that you appreciate this. Yeah, the, uh, let's see, is OBS CPU or RAM intensive? <clears throat> well, uh, this, this over here, this blue computer, which uh, I've got to reposition this anyway. This blue computer over here, see that See that thing right there? That computer? Yeah, that thing? That is what's running this stream. This is a Pentium Silver in something. So it's running one step above a Celeron and below a Core i3. CPU intensive doesn't have to be. RAM intensive, I'm pretty sure that's four gigs of RAM, so no. It doesn't have to be. Now, obviously, if you have more CPU, you can do more stuff. One of the things I can't do with this setup is uh, that I can do with a bigger computer is I can't run a browser at the same time and capture live chat because that the browser puts the CPU needs way past what can be handled and OBS basically just chokes like I'm already encoding at 720 yeah this is a 720p stream and I'm using the Intel QuickSync encoder built into the GPU built into the CPU so that there's no CPU being used to do the uh, video encoding work that better be Phillips looks like it could be not Phillips but it better be and it is so on that little laptop, I am exploiting GPU features that offload CPU usage. Um, and I'm not running anything but OBS Studio. And that's how I'm able to get a 720p stream encoded in real time and pushed out to you. So yeah, it it's all relative, man. It's uh, If I had a bunch of crazy filters... Like if I was doing video filtering, now you're talking heavy usage. Now you're talking this computer can't handle it. Like if I did color corrections and crap like that, there's no way. I hate putting these antennas back. Have I ever told you guys that I hate putting these antennas back? So I hate putting these antennas back. They are. So, this is so stupid. You know, and I may just not bother right now because I don't care. The whole thing may just not work. And it probably doesn't. I mean, it's water damaged and it doesn't do anything when you turn it on. So, it already doesn't work. So, we'll just leave that alone for now. That's, that's a problem for later. Why do it now when you can deal with it later? Anywho. Yeah, OBS Studio can be very intensive, but it depends on what you're doing. It's like anything else. In Premiere... You can make Premiere choke pretty easily if you uh, try to do a whole lot of effects at once and your computer can't handle them. Like, if you do color correction and Gaussian blur and all this other stuff, yeah, you are you can easily end up with Premiere just bleh, and you know, and you can't do a real-time preview to save your life. Of course, that's where proxies come into play. Premiere proxies are how you get around that problem, but... That's not really something. I guess this isn't really the place to chat about how to edit 4K video in Premiere. Oh boy. You have an i5 6th gen and you're recording lags. It sounds to me like you have a problem. Uh, it, it really, I would have to know a lot more about your setup to know why it lags as heck, as you put it. All right, let's let's see what we can see here. <clears throat> so originally, originally the uh, water damage was down here. I think I may have 
overdone that just a bit. So we had water damage down here. And on the other side, I would expect to see corrosion. That's why I'm taking this board out. I would absolutely expect that there would be some corrosion in this area right here. But I am not seeing... Maybe I just can't see because, you know, it's you need a magnifier, but I'm not seeing any evidence that liquid got down here on this other side and trashed anything. Like, I, I don't see anywhere that, that there's any corrosion at all. Now, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of corrosion up here. Like, there's still corrosion all over this battery connector. I ought to just remove that. But I'm really bad with a heat gun, so I'm afraid to do that. But yeah, there's corrosion all over the place. Like, I wish that I could show it to you, but it's actually really hard to... Uh, if I put this thing in manual focus, and I do the closest focus this can do... Um, I don't know... Yeah, you may not be able to see that. So, whatever. But... It's right there. That whole area is just trash. There's just crap all over the place. So, yeah. So I don't see any additional corrosion. And the problem is that I cleaned what I could and the board still doesn't work. And I don't do board level repair. Because what will happen is I will go to take like this out and, you know, pop some bigger stuff off. And end up just blowing surface mount components all over the place. And they'll have to get a new board anyway. So what I needed from this primarily was just to uh, get a board number. And I think that is what I am going to do. I need to take a photograph. If the thing will focus on it. Of these numbers and see if any of them is actually a real part number and not just some bogus crap bet you there's no HP spares number on the board of course not why would there be let's take this back off this whole thing is just ruined anyway so let's just lift it all up come on get get off there there you go if I got a new board I'd have to transfer it all anyway so what's this there is a number here that doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, yeah, I don't see any stickers or anything. There's only silk screening on the back. Something under this memory stick, maybe? I doubt it. Uh, nope. Those are component specs for some reason. I don't even know why they bother. So I'm going to need to get another board. Oh, boy. pretty sure and someone's here so yeah this this has been just fun I'm gonna put you on hold and
I'm not back yet. I'll be right back. Who's back? Some guy named Simon, who knows? <clears throat> okay. All right. I'm back. I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes, you can, I hope. All right. So I'm not even sure why I'm still running the stream. I mean, I've got the number. I could reflow the CPU for kicks, but I don't feel like that's going to help. So, yeah. Who knows? By the way, that was a customer picking up a computer. So, sorry about that. I don't really get the... I don't exactly get to plan exactly when they come by. It just, you know, when people show up to give me money, I do not ignore them. <sighs> so this thing's done. Um, I, I'm not... The boards are kind of expensive, and uh, I don't actually know what I'm going to do about it. But I have to have an answer today. The corrosion's bad enough, I don't think I can fix it. So, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe I'll reflow it just for kicks. It almost certainly will do nothing to fix it, so what do? It's a good chance the customer's not going to want it fixed at the price I see the boards for. They'll be like, oh, I can just go get a new computer. Because that's how people are. They, if, you, if they bought this computer for, what, probably $400, who knows. Actually, what is this supposed to have in it? You have a Core i5 8th generation. The board says 2018. Yeah, it's a uh, welcome to the stream. Um, it It's kind of over at this point, frankly, because I think the only thing I can really even try is reflowing this. But I don't do component level repair, and I'm pretty sure... It's trashed on a very personal level. Let me see. I don't know that this is going to work, but let me see if by any wacky chance I can get it to where you can see that corrosion. We're going to we're going to do some gorilla style videography here. Let's see if we can get it to where you can see anything at all. It's really hard though, like it just blocks the light. It's obnoxious. I don't think I can do that. So yeah. Yeah, frankly you can probably just see it right there. Mm. Here, let's do this. Let's be smart. That's do not disturb. That's a flashlight. Let's use the light on this phone. And there you go. Now yeah, maybe you can see it a little better. Down there by the power connector, you see that thing by the power connector? You see all the green underneath it? It's pretty bad. And the problem is that there's corrosion probably under things I can't see. And that's why this is probably just going to get 
written off and uh, we'll buy a new computer or the customer will just buy a new computer turn the autofocus back on genius that would be really smart so yeah I'm uh I was hoping there was more corrosion underneath this that was causing the problem that I could just clean off and there's not and I didn't turn on the uh, do not disturb function so now people are calling me and it's making noises it's one of those days man maybe I need to back off of streaming for a little while and uh, just calm down because it's always something like this it's always just uh, you open it up and you find problems that you didn't expect and this is this is just sad I'm I was really hoping there was something that could be cleaned to fix it screw it all right I give up gonna see if I can find a board take it easy AG play I'm, I'm gonna go and uh, I have several other computers to work on, but they're all desktops, and it's just, I'm not set up to stream over there. So um, I'm going to cut it. Y'all have a great one. Thank you very much. And I appreciate your viewership.